how is the the notion of the 12 Elohim related to, as you just mentioned, these architects of the universe and of the cosmos? Well, the, we'd have to go to some of uh, uh, the Hindu masters talk about something that's called the absolute or the all there is. Uh, the absolute or the all there is, it, it is everything. And at a certain point, it became self-aware in a very limited way. So in other words, just, just imagine just waking up one day and then realizing that everything is you. Everything is actually you, but you just woke up. You don't know anything about yourself way down there or way up there, or way over there, etc. You don't know anything about yourself and your desire to know yourself, to know thyself and all thy infinite potential, which is the only real directive of existence itself, to know thyself. And so this absolute or all there is was desirous of understanding itself. And so in order to understand the depth of itself, it created versions, you could say, of itself. And it think of them as drones, as a, an analogy for the 21st century. So it created a version and it sent these drones out to explore itself over there, explore itself over there, down there, over there, because it didn't know anything about itself. Now, those are the 12 gods. Now, this is... I'm not the only one, it's rare, but I'm not the only one that has experienced these things. The, the, the Elohim are the, these 12 other gods and their children or their projections are the ascended masters. If you're enjoying the video and you wanna go deeper with me, check out my meditation masterclass. It's unlike anything. It's pinned in the comments below. And so they've had, the ascended masters are the true teachers of humanity. And some of these Elohim have played the role in the building of all the advanced civilizations that have ever been on this planet and various systems of worlds, not just, not just Earth. So the Elohim, these other gods, when they project pieces of themselves, these are, these are what we call the ascended masters. And there's 13, what I call old school <laughs> ascended masters. There's, there's several dozen ascended masters that have gone through evolution. These ascended masters I'm talking about uh, were created at that level if that makes sense. They, they didn't become a master through evolution. They were they started off that way. And these Elohim are the ones that play the major roles in every advanced civilization, Lemuria, ancient Egypt, all of them. And not just, not just this planet, but other planets as well. And if the Elohim created these physical universes, what then to your insight created the Elohim? The, the absolute or the all there is, is what gave birth to these things. So we are, we are mm. still within all there is. But then you get one step removed, you then have the creation of the all there is, and this is the Elohim. And the Elohim, these other gods like our God, create environments for them to evolve, for them to learn about themselves. And the God that, that the environment that we're in is a, is a multiverse that was created by one of those gods. And the ascended masters that keep showing up here are the children of the Elohim. And those ascended masters that keep showing up here are the ones that come here with this supreme knowledge, supreme wisdom. Uh, and they plant the seeds for these advanced civilizations because they actually are the true, the true teachers of humanity and really the, the true teachers of consciousness itself, but just specifically we're talking about humanity. Hmm. It got me thinking because if there's 12 different Elohim that then go on to create their own universes or worlds, then that must mean that they all like to create in a different way, that they have some sort of differences in, in their tastes in the qualities that they imbue into their creations. What are some of those differences between the, the 12 universes that were created just from the one that we're experiencing now here in this physical dimension. There, on yeah, Earth. I mean, you're so right. The differences are that there's no words to describe actually how different it really is. This multiversal structure, multifrequential, multidimensional structure that was created by our God is completely and utterly unique. There is no other Elohim or God that created any environment that is anything like this whatsoever at all. Um, what I can talk about specifically is the environment that I'm from uh is this this elohim or this god that i am a projection of and i used to draw pictures of it as a kid i didn't know why i was drawing these pictures uh it made sense once i got into my 20s that i go now i realize why i just kept drawing that oh because that's home 
So we don't really have a frame of reference for these things, Amelia, so it becomes very, very difficult. But just think of a, a four quadrants and they operate independently, but are constantly informing one another and learning from one another uh, concurrently and in parallel. But there's these four separate quadrants. And the only way that I can describe it is it's a level of what we would call quantum mechanics that is so far beyond our intellect that these things are happening in each quadrant on so many different levels. And each quadrant is learning simultaneously from the three other quadrants and they're informing one another as it's actually happening. And it's a level of, of consciousness and mechanics that it, there's no way that I can describe the level of evolution that is happening. But the only way I can describe it is that my consciousness works like that, which is why my consciousness is so odd, is that it's really working in a different way. Now, that environment doesn't have any low frequency as well. So those four quadrants are supremely high frequency. It created nothing like uh, what, what our God, I mean, our God has created high frequencies and high dimensions as well. But it, it, the, the, this Elohim that I am part of didn't create an environment that's low frequency. So everything that's happening is in the supreme and exalted state. And everything, and therefore everything that this Elohim ever produces is of supremely high frequency. Now, the, the Elohim that also projected the being that we know as Thoth or Buddha, uh, the environments are not the same, but that Elohim also didn't create anything of low, of low frequency at all. So, and I, I and I, I find that quite telling if we look at the incarnations of Master R and we look at the incarnations of the being that we know as Buddha their consciousness is very reflective of this supremely high frequency and mastery of mind and things like this, because nothing that that, that the source that they came from never created anything low frequency. So everything is of, of this exalted state of state of consciousness, but each, each Elohim's environment is so wildly different. And there's really no words that it, it has to be experienced. I mean, there's no physicality. There's just, there's no physicality to some of these things, none. It's the moment that you have intention for anything. It, it, it's like literally like an, an, an entire, not civilization, but it's almost like an entire world is built in like a second. And un, until you, <laughs> until you experience these things, I, I'm just going to struggle to try to find words. But where I come from is those four quadrants that operates on a level of quantum mechanics that is not, that the human mind can't comprehend. Hmm. And RJ, what can you tell us about the specific Elohim that created this earth plane? Because I feel that when we begin to understand what was the primary intention behind the creation of this physical universe, we can navigate as masters within it instead of as victims from it. Well, th this I'm partial. <laughs> I'm partial to our God and this environment because I, I do most of my uh, work uh, here when I, when I incarnate. So our, our God, and I've said this before, but if we could really allow ourselves to feel the depth of the statement that the, that the multiverse is a multi-frequential, multi-dimensional hall of mirrors designed for self-mastery. And from my perspective, it is the single greatest piece of imagination ever inspired into existence where this multiverse of this God, there's absolutely nothing like it. Everything is mirroring back our state of being and our state of consciousness perpetually for eternity. And it's perfectly designed to get endless feedback on what it is that we're creating, on what it is that we're emanating. And that's why I say it's literally a multi-frequential, multi-dimensional hall of mirrors designed for self-mastery because it absolutely is. There is nothing like this multiverse anywhere, anywhere. And th this, this, this self-mastery designed for self to know thyself and all thy infinite potential. I feel this creation is the ultimate in understanding that. And I feel that way about consciousness, about the whole thing is to know thyself and all thy infinite potential. 
So it, it, we're a perfect, uh, I don't know, match because I'm just as obsessed with the evolution of consciousness as our God is. And it's like, it, it's past an obsession for me. It's past, I can't stop. I mean, it, it, it's, it's like I've, I've gotten out of the way a long time ago and it just, I am compelled and impelled and I couldn't stop doing what I'm, what I'm doing even right now if I tried. I can't. And so I, I feel like it's, it is the greatest thing ever invented for our own evolution because everything is mirrored back to us. The universe, the multiverse mirrors and amplifies whatever it is that we give notion to. We are in this perpetual state of learning about the self. And it is, it is of supreme, super, it's, it's a level of intelligence that is not comprehensible. And to me, it's, it is the greatest creation ever imagined into existence for the evolution of consciousness itself. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you are desirous of more, more of the real you and less of your conditioned, agitated mind, if you know that you can create a life that you're not leading right now, but you know you can, check out my meditation masterclass. It's pinned in the comments below.